friends, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Middle grade March is in full swing. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys are reading some great middle grade books. I'm here today to do a tag. I was planning on doing a different video, but Amanda from The Curly Reader created a middle grade March book tag or a middle grade book tag and I need to do it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Let's get into the questions. I've got my phone right here. I have not even really, what is it doing? I haven't even really planned out my responses, so we're just going to see how this goes. The first question is, what is the last middle grade book that you read? And since it's middle grade March, I have already read a couple middle grade books. My reading has slowed down a little bit towards the end of the week just because it's been, it's just been a busy week. And I'm also trying to finish up another book for my secret TBR video, which has not happened yet. But I have read a couple middle grade books already. And the last one that I finished was a book called Each Little Bird That Sings by Deborah Wiles. Deborah Wiles writes like southern middle grade fiction. This is the only book of hers that I've read. I buddy read it with Kate Howe. Each Little Bird That Sings is a book to savor and yet I could not stop reading it. I left poor Kate in the dust who's reading multiple things so couldn't read it quite as fast as me and oh my goodness I just loved this book so much. It's a new favorite middle grade contemporary setting southern fiction so it has that sort of southern feel to a book. I've kind of described it as like if you mash up a Kate DiCamillo book, like a Three Rancheros kind of feel with a Sharon Creech, you get Each Little Bird That Sings. So yeah, it feels like a little bit, a little bit Walk Two Moons, a little bit Ramey Nightingale. I loved it so much. Some of the negative criticisms of this book that I have seen are about the character names, which are funny. They're just unusual names, like the main character's named Comfort Snowburger. Her brother's name is Tidings, her cousin's name is Peach, and they have a dog named Dismay, but that didn't bother me. This book is about grief, ultimately, and the book starts off kind of slow and comforting, and then it packs a real wallop towards the middle of the book, and I really, really love how death was handled in this book. Comfort Snowburger is our main character, like I said, and her family owns a funeral home, and so they're surrounded by death all the time. It really normalizes death in a very appropriate way. Comfort herself is very used to death because her family owns this funeral home, and yet she hasn't dealt with it a lot on a personal level, and so that's what this book is dealing with, and it's just wonderful. Wow, I really answered that. It took a long time to answer that question. I was hoping I could just zip through these, but... Question two. What is a middle grade book someone read to as a child? I feel like this is a little bit of a cop-out because this is the same answer that Amanda gave when she was answering the questions, but it's the first book that came to mind before the words even exited her mouth. The book that I remember being read to the most is Matilda by Roald Dahl. This was my favorite book growing up. This is actually my copy from when I was a child and it is shockingly still intact. I have always treated my books very well. The first time I read this book I read it to myself but then I had my mom read it out loud to us. I remember my mom reading the first chapter of this book and just cackling with laughter because it was it's so funny. Darkly funny but very very funny and yeah, I, I loved the experience of my mom reading it out loud because she enjoyed it so much. And then I loved it so much and just kept reading it over and over and over again and wanted to hear it out loud so often. So I begged my fifth grade teacher to read it out loud to the class. And so Mr. Berge read Matilda out loud to the classroom and he did all the voices and it was wonderful. Question number three is what was your favorite middle grade book as a child? Since I already talked about Matilda, I'm going to talk about another childhood favorite. And that is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech, which I actually already mentioned in this video. I read this book maybe when I was 12, whereas I read Matilda when I was more like eight or nine. And this book became my favorite at that time. I loved this book. I remember Salamanca in this book develops a crush on a boy and she might even share a first kiss with him. And I remember reading that and being old enough to understand sort of budding romance and just being wrapped up in that. I read this book again a couple years ago and that part is so, so minor in the book that I can't believe it stood so large in my head. Nevertheless, this was an all-time favorite book. I read it a couple years ago and loved it just as much. Walk Two Moons is an incredible middle grade novel. I couldn't speak more highly of this book if I tried. Sharon Creech is an amazing author. Question four is what is your favorite middle grade book as an adult? I cannot just answer this question with one book. 
so I'm gonna have to answer with many books. Two of the books I'd like to mention, I actually just recently lent to my mom, so I don't have them. One is The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which is an amazing middle grade fantasy novel. I'm actually re-reading it, or really listening to it on audiobook this month, and it's reminding me how much I love it. It is absolutely incredible. This is the kind of middle grade novel that you want to put into the hands of adults and say, this is what good middle grade is. It is so good. It doesn't pander to children. It t it expects children to rise to the level of the language in the book. It's just it's beautifully written and it's an amazing story. I love it to pieces. One of my other favorites is The War That Saved My Life, which my mom is reading right now. It's another incredible middle grade novel, World War II historical fiction about a little girl with a clubbed foot whose mother is abusive and she escapes during the bombing raids in London to the country and it's sort of a book about found family, also one of my favorites. I'm just gonna mention a few others that I love. Echo by Pam Nino's Ryan is another favorite. World War II historical fiction again. The Penderwicks by Jean Birdsall. My favorite middle grade family. I love The Penderwicks so much. It's a whole series, there's five books. I've read the first three. Books one and three are currently my favorite. Two was good, but it wasn't my favorite. Still need to read four and five. And then Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster is another middle grade favorite. All these books are so good, I can't just mention one. Question five is who is your favorite middle grade author? Uh, I could have mentioned these authors as writing my favorite books as well, so please take that into account. These are favorite authors who've written favorite middle grade books. The first is obviously if you know me at all, Ella Montgomery, who wrote Anne of Green Gables. This is one of my many copies of Anne of Green Gables. I love Anne. I reread her often. This is probably my favorite book of all time, so obviously this is a favorite book and a favorite author. I've read multiple Ella Montgomery books, and I love them all. Her writing is some of my very favorite just in general. Another favorite middle grade author is Kate DiCamillo. Her most famous book is probably The Tale of Despero. She has also written numerous beloved children's books, and she is a beloved author of mine. I love Katie Camillo. I love her writing. I love her stories. The Three Rancheros is one of my faves. I still need to read Beverly right here, but it's so good. And then another favorite middle grade author is Gary Schmidt, who wrote The Wednesday Wars and OK For Now. His most recent, I think, is Pay Attention Carter Jones, which I haven't read yet, but really want to, and I do own it. The Wednesday Wars is another favorite, favorite book. Same with OK For Now. I actually don't know which one I like better, but these, they are both excellent, excellent middle grade novels. I feel a little bit like I'm repeating myself because whenever I talk about middle grade books or middle grade authors, I mention these ones a lot, but they're just, they're really good. Question six is what middle grade book do you think should be required reading in school? answer this one. I'm actually going to say the same thing that Amanda did as well. Oh, there's so many books that I want to put into the hands of kids, but I love the message in this book so much. I feel like it's a message that every kid should take into their heart, and that's Wonder by R.J. Palacio, because the message of this book is to choose kind. Be kind. Be kind to everyone, no matter what, and that is something that I carry with me in my own life, is choosing kindness. So. I'm gonna say Wonder. Wonder is about a little boy named Augie Pullman who has um, craniofacial dysplasia, I think. He was born with a facial abnormality and he's never gone to a mainstream school. His parents decide to send him to public school and this is about that experience. This is Augie living through that. You also get his sister's perspective and I think maybe one or two of his friends' perspectives. It's a beautiful story. Question seven is what is your favorite middle grade book cover? Middle grade books have beautiful book covers. I'm gonna mention a couple different styles that I really like. First, I'll mention a book that I haven't read but I'm really excited to. It's called A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison and I just love the cover of this book. This is a little bit of a cover buy because I don't actually know much about the insides of the book. Other than I know that Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin read and loved this book. He reads a lot of middle grade, I think especially middle grade fantasy, and this is one of his favorites from last year, and I saw him talking about it, and I loved the cover so much that I wanted it for myself. So definitely this. Song for a Whale is another middle grade book that I just think has an insanely gorgeous cover. This is by Lynn Kelly. This is another book that I haven't read, but I really, really want to. This has been on my shelf for over a year now. It's about a little girl who's deaf. She finds out about this whale 
who sings at a different frequency than other whales and kind of just roams the ocean looking for family, basically looking for connection with other whales and, and has trouble finding that. Sometimes pods of whales will let him swim with them and sometimes they won't. And so this whale is very lonely, so this little girl sets out to make a connection with this whale, create a device to make a connection with this whale. I've heard wonderful things about this book, and it has a stunning cover. And then finally, I also love covers like this. This is The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemmenhart. This is sort of a classic middle grade novel cover with sort of an illustrated girl on the front with, you know, pretty lettering. And I love middle grade book covers like this one too. Those are three examples of book covers that I love, middle grade book covers that I love. And then the last question is, what is your favorite middle grade book to movie or book to screen adaptation? Oh sheesh, let's see. I think I'm gonna say Anne of Green Gables. I love the CBC adaptation of Anne of Green Gables. It will forever and ever and ever have my heart. So I think that's, I think that's probably my favorite. Mmm, it smells so good. Okay, those are all the questions. I'm gonna tag a few people as well. I'm gonna tag Bree from Call Me After Coffee, Liv from Liv's Library, April from Getting Hooga With It, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, Vicky from Chapter 32, Kate from Kate Howe, I'm going to tag Jess from Jess McGlynn, and I think that's enough. I wanna tag everyone. So if I didn't tag you, it was no offense. It's just because I was just trying to come up with all the names off the top of my head. But please, do this tag because I want to see, I want to see what everyone else's answers for this are. All of the information about this tag will be listed below. I will link Amanda's channel, The Curly Reader. Please, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to stick around. So subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you all have a great day. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!